Hi, I'd like to read a story about puffins, which are birds that fly over the ocean here in Maine. And these puffins' names are Harris and Isla, and they're a married couple of puffins, and this is the story of them starting their family, and it's called Sky the Puffling, and it was written by Lynn Rickards and John Mitchell. One sunny spring day on a cliff by the sea, there hatched a young puffling, as sweet as can be. Harris and Isla were bursting with pride. Their little gray bundle of joy had arrived. Sky was her name, and she soon let them know that this cute little fluff ball was raring to go. Sky was a lively wee thing from day one. She had a huge appetite, second to none. She wouldn't stay still. There was so much to see. She just couldn't wait to be off flying free. She'd trip and she'd tumble and sometimes fall flat, but Sky the adventurer didn't mind that. One bright early morning, Sky opened her eyes. She flapped her short wings and stretched up to the skies. Both Harris and Isla were still fast asleep, so Sky tiptoed past them, not making a peep. The sunrise was lovely, all pink, gold, and blue, and Sky scampered off to admire the view. She bounced up the cliff and then raced to the top. She got to the edge but she just couldn't stop. Over the cliff and then down, down she fell. She fluttered and tumbled and let out a yell. Then suddenly, whoop, Sky was on something white, the feathery back of a gannet in flight. He lifted her up and he flew through the air. The gannet had not even noticed her there. Sky held on tight as the gannet flew on, beating his wings in the bright morning dawn. He dipped to the left and she rolled like a ball, straight down his wing. Was she going to fall? Just as poor Sky felt quite sure that she might, he turned one more time and she rolled to the right. Sky grabbed his back and held on for dear life. This gannet was slicing the air like a knife. Harris and Isla woke just after dawn, and that's when they noticed their puffling was gone. They searched high and low, but she still couldn't be found. Have you seen our sky? She is small, gray, and round. A seagull swooped down and said, yes, I saw her, yes. She's riding a gannet, due south, I would guess. Let's go, shouted Harris. There's no time to lose. We've got to get out and start looking for clues. Isla and Harris zoomed off through the air, but they had to find Sky right this minute. But where? Harris tried asking some ducks on the beach. Had they seen a puffling as soft as a peach? Isla swooped low when she spotted an otter. Perhaps he'd seen little Sky fall in the water. A gannet would fly to Bass Rock, he replied. You're right, that's one place we still haven't tried. While they were searching, Sky still held on tight, hoping and praying with all of her might. The gannet looked down and then dropped like a stone she clung to his tail by her wingtips alone. He zoomed like a rocket straight into the sea to catch a big beak full of fish for his tea. Sky was left fluttering down in a spin. Big waves rose to meet her, and then she fell in. Down, down she went, and the water was cold. She started to sink as the waves tossed and rolled. She turned in slow motion and opened her eyes. Bright fish darted past her, some three times her size. More gannets were diving, the fish thrashed about. 
Sky kicked her feet hard to try to get out. The brave little bird reached the surface at last. She paddled and kicked, and she spluttered and gasped. Then up popped her gannet with fish in his beak. He swallowed them quickly in order to speak. My goodness, he said, come climb onto my wing. What's brought you so far from your home, little thing? You carried me here on your back, Sky replied. I've been on a very long piggyback ride. Quick, hold on tight, said the gannet. Let's fly. He got her to safety, a rock high and dry. Bass Rock was crowded with very big birds. Their squawking and screeching was too loud for words. The noise was atrocious. The rock was a mess. The smell of that white stuff was just as you'd guess. Skye tried not to worry. She knew she was tough. But what would she do if that wasn't enough? Meanwhile, her parents flew on side by side. They scanned the horizon and searched far and wide. A craggy white rock slowly came into sight. We've made it, Bass Rock, they both cried with delight. The gannets and gulls were soon filling the skies, but one tiny puffling caught Isla's sharp eyes. Sky was so pleased when her parents swooped down they struggled her clo they snuggled her close. Our dear puffling is found. Now Sky was too small to go back all that way, so Harris and Isla decided to stay. All summer Bass Rock was a playground for Sky. Her but autumn was coming. She'd soon have to fly. Her friends helped her practice to get big and strong. She flapped her short wings and went running along. Scott's fuzzy gray baby fluff wore away too. Her lovely sleek feathers were shiny and new. One late summer's day, Sky looked out at the sea. She knew it was time to be grown up and free. Her parents flew first after hugging her tight then Sky flapped her wings for her first solo flight. She rose in the air by the light of the moon and called to her gannet friends, Bye! See you soon! A life of adventure was waiting for Sky. She couldn't be happier. Now she could fly. And that's the story of Sky the Puffling. I hope you enjoyed it.